How did 80s kids become their favorite superhero? Find out in this episode of Nostalgia Knowledge. Hey guys, before you get started, make sure you click that subscribe button. And if you don't ring that bell, you won't get any updates. Welcome to Nostalgia Knowledge, the place you come to find out what the heck all those old guys are talking about. Let's load up the time circuits and figure out where we're going to go. Today, 1984. Here we go. Challenge your imagination to come alive and to battle with the creatures of Dungeons and Dragons. Grapple against the forces of evil as a Marvel Comics superhero. Being both a Dungeons and Dragons nerd and a comic book guy, I never really understood the lack of crossover between the two genres. Both have many commonalities. Fantastic set pieces, incredible stories, and amazing people abound in both genres. The problem has always been, as many experienced gamers will tell you, there has never really been an RPG game that became the standard bearer for the superhero genre. For me, I don't think there has ever been a gaming system that brought the riches and diversity of a comic book universe to life the way the original Marvel Super Heroes game was able to do. The basic system was introduced by the creators of the hugely successful Dungeons and Dragons, TSR, which stands for Tactical Studies Rules, back in 1984. After a successful run, the expanded edition was sent to print in 1986 and the system would start a long publication run. Additional supplements were actually published until 1999, closing with the release of Reed Richards' Guide to Everything. Jeff Grubb designed both editions with Steve Winter writing them both. The Marvel Superhero RPG game was a really complete system for its day. Using the basic core rules, you could create an adventure or a hero in almost any of the many realms of the Marvel Universe. But that really wasn't the true beauty of the game. It was the supplements. The system was ripe with new material and source book that could fill any void you ever wanted to flesh out. Since the system was released in the mid-1980s, many of the campaign books were directly writ from the comics of that era. Want to be the Incredible Hulk and be whisked away to fight in Battle World by the Beyonder? Well, off in the Secret War we go. Want to pick up a hammer as Beta Ray Bill and fight alongside Thor and the other Asgardians in the final battle? We'll pull out the module Ragnarok and Roll. How about be a time-traveling mutant attempting to save the future by recovering the past? Nightmares of Future Past is just waiting. There are also a plethora of source books here, covering magic, team source books, expanded villains, and villainous organizations. There's even a couple source books that marvelize cities, like MA6 New York, New York, which helps you really create a unique and authentic Marvel cityscape. Now, if you've never played a pen and paper RPG game before, the rules can seem daunting, but this process proves simple for even the novice gamers. The game system attached to Marvel superheroes is often referred to as the Face Rip system. Each letter of the Face Rip acronym represents a different character attribute. Fighting, Agility, Strength, Endurance, Reason, Intuition, and Psyche. Additionally, each character has Health, Karma, Resources, and a Popularity Rating along with each his own unique set of powers, talents, and backgrounds. Now what made the face rip system unique was how it applied its ranking to these attributes. Unlike other game systems of the time that just used a numeric scale, the face rip used a system that applied descriptors like feeble, good, excellent, or remarkable to describe and separate power levels. Now what was cool is all gameplay was quick and efficient using the 2d10 dice rolling system and the face rip chart to allow the game master to keep the story rolling while providing proper scale to heroes and villains within the various power levels. This combination of easy to navigate characters and game mechanics made the game very playable for new and experienced players alike. The legacy of the Marvel Super RPG has been long and reaching but never quite as successful. Shortly after the line was ended in 1999, TSR quickly released a new game called Marvel Super Heroes Adventure Game before the rights reverted back to Marvel, but it got a poor reception. This is followed in 2003 by the Marvel Universe role-playing game published by Marvels itself, and then again in 2011 with the Marvel Heroic role-playing basic game published by Margaret Weiss Productions. None of these efforts ever regained the level of fan support obtained by the original game. One of the best parts of this game I've been holding back to the end. Although long out of print, the license for the game has actually elapsed and the material has fallen into the public arena. This means you can get most of the material for free. If you go to the website Classic Marvel Heroes, 
Yeah, not even close. And since these guys do such a stellar job, I had to step in. Couldn't be let go. The website is classicmarvelforever.com. They do a good job, and they deserve to have the proper citation. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled program. Put a link in the description below. You can find many of the source books, as well as a massive library of support material to create and run your own Marvel superhero campaign. It's not just Marvel characters, by the way. The folks over at Marvel Classic Forever have even done a nice rundown of your favorite DC characters in case you want to give them a whirl. But DC Comics RPGs are a totally different topic for a totally different time. The guys at Classic Marvel Forever really deserve a Classic Marvel No Prize. If you are a longtime gamer and remember the system and really have it hit on all cylinders, you need to check this out. If you're a fellow comic fan, give it a check. Trust me, it's worth it. The right friends and a game master can create a unique and unforgettable experience in the Marvel Universe. Heck, play enough and your favorite version of Earth might be your own. And the best part of the game? Finally being able to settle up with your friends, who wins? So did you ever play or does this sound like something you would enjoy? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you press like below, click subscribe, and if you don't ring that bell, you won't get any updates. Peace.